lodges would be where they keep all the samples, do all the experiments, and you can have bunks back here to sleep and a place to eat. Forward section is a whole separate part where you would. It's got seats where you can drive. This uh, comes in two pieces. You can actually get in the front part there and separate from the aft here, close the door between the two, and drive off in the front part there and pick up winter samples and soil and bring it back, dock to the uh, lab that you parked and rejoin, open the door, and bring all these samples out here and use the, the gloves and experimental uh, equipment in here to research what you've just brought back from the surface of Mars. So, so you're saying that these two pieces that we have here can disconnect now? Can separate. Now, when, uh, how long, how many hours did you log? How, how long were you in space? I was in space uh, 133 hours. 133 hours. 133 hours more than most people. Um, no, 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 no. We've got people who have been in space for a year now. When, <laughs> when we were flying space shuttles, it was nominal to be up there for eight or nine days. Yeah. It's changed a lot since we were up there. Changed a lot. We just, uh, Peggy Whitson, our first American woman to live up there for more than a year, just uh, set the record in the last couple of weeks. That's excellent. Um, so taking us through, now this is a concept vehicle. This won't actually uh, touch the surface. This won't go to Mars. This is built to show you what the uh, real one's going to look like and feel like. And uh, we've taken all the best engineering data we can from NASA and all the design concepts that we can. And uh, we think this is, it might not look exactly like this, but I'll guarantee you some parts and pieces of it will look exactly the same. Uh, it depends on where do we go, you know, in the next, uh, if it's 10 or 15 years from now, the whole concept could change. We may have some futuristic uh, design concepts or materials or anything could pop up in the next 10 or 15 years where technology goes to where this thing might look totally different. But based on what we know today, I have two pieces, they will separate right here at the midsection and you can drive away and come back and dock with the forward part. And pretty much, uh, this will also go with it if you want to move your whole base. You can lift up the anchors here on the rear part of this thing, and it's got wheels, two wheels on the back, so you can tow the whole Martian rover to a new site if you want to for a month or two or a year. So it's not, once you land this thing, it's not fixed in this position. You can always move the forward part at any time you want. Yeah, we're going to take a peek at the uh, cockpit here, and we'll give folks a look at the outside yeah. uh, a little bit later. So we see there are four seats in here. Uh, it's real cozy, um, very space age graphics we have here, uh, backup cameras. Uh, so even just like uh, modern vehicles, um, the screens fold out and show you the floor in here. Um, I don't know if I could fit on one of those seats, but I'm not going to be an astronaut anytime soon. <laughs> um, and so park all there. Yeah. And so well, this uh, also has uh, controls to drive. We drive it here on Earth, so obviously it's going to be uh, got a you know, steering wheel up there on the left side. It's got a accelerator and a brake and stuff like that so we can't actually drive it on the surface of the earth and um it's and just not licensed to get on the highway. right right i was gonna ask uh how fast can this thing go well i can go a whopping four or five miles per hour a whopping four yeah, or five normal speed will be one or two it depends on the topography you know, obviously you don't want to be climbing over rocks and boulders at more than a half a mile per hour as slow as you can possibly go so it will go up to four or five miles per hour on straight level, but probably very rarely would you do that. And so this um, is obviously uh, built for research, and we see here, um, I'm seeing hands going into gloves here to work on different samples. We see over here, uh, the things we bring there. back, you know, we don't necessarily know if they're radioactive or they've got some kind of element or poisonous component to that that we got to be concerned about. So the first thing you do when you bring it in from the out exterior is to bring whatever container you had and put it inside this a closed shop here, closed at lab experiment. Sure. You can look at it and work at it without being exposed to it. That is obviously important. Uh, right. You can't run to the uh, urgent care. Right. Um, and so I guess we've seen here a microscope that people can, uh, you know, look at more it's closely. It's rudimentary what you see there. It's not really space quality stuff. Yeah, I'm I imagine sure you all can be putting this in the concept. I think as a matter of fact, there's probably loaded with fish hooks and stuff like that. So. Okay, great. So this is the perfect fishing vehicle right, right, right now as it is. Good, good. If you got about a million bucks. Oh, is that is that what it costs? I don't know. Just oh, okay, you're just about a million. Sure. I don't think so. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like, um, as we said in our story previewing this, it looks like a transformer mixed with a Batmobile. Uh, <laughs> would you say it's about right? Well, that's about right. It's built by the people that did the same vehicles. There you go. So they, uh, okay, perfect. They know uh, how to make things look cool. A wonderful group of people called the Parker Brothers down in Florida. They kind of came up with this concept and built it in less than a year. So they were really a fine group of people. Right next to Kennedy Space Center. So you, 
come see us at the Kennedy and you can see all these things on display. Down there. And so, as I understand the tour, uh, you are going to be going around the U.S. during the summer. Um, and, and where will you be stopping? I'm going to be with it this week in Atlanta and next week up at the Air and Space Museum in Washington. I'm going to start a, uh, but I'll just with it for these first two weeks. Maybe join it later in the, in the summer. Okay. It goes from here to Washington, D.C. Excellent. Um, and if uh, any viewers have any questions, p please feel free and uh, throw those our way. Um, so the uh, technology here, just giving you all uh, a better look at it. Um, and right now it's on a trailer, but we'll, we'll take you outside in, in just a second. Um, no, Joe Richards, I think it's a different Parker Brothers, not the ones who uh, made the Monopoly game. Uh, no, no, it's, uh, they build vehicles. They build a lot of, they built the Batmobile and all those kind of things. Well, very cool. Um, so just again, give folks a look at the cockpit if they joined us a bit late. And then I think we'll hop outside. Um, because one thing it looks like they have installed here is an air conditioning, and I know uh, I don't want the poor astronaut to uh, <laughs> to sweat himself silly. Um, Which will be a very important thing on Mars. Not yeah. so much uh, cooling you down, but heating you up, because it's uh, normally on the surface of Mars, it doesn't get up to freezing level very rarely. Uh, rarely at the summertime at the equator, it might get up to the freezing level. So most of the times around the equator, it's below zero. That uh, is pretty darn cold. Yes. Um, and Ethan Wright, this is parked right at the Battery by the Roxy Theater. Um, we're gonna, is all right with you? We take a hop out and take a sure. look at the exterior. Let's go. I'm sure you don't mind. Don't mind at all. A bit toasty. Just another look at it, and let's hop out here. Down the stairs we go. Let's see how graceful I can be on a ladder on Facebook Live. Let's see how graceful I can be. There you go. Hey, hey, you got right. it. We're going to take a look at the exterior. Thank you so all much. Right, Appreciate it. So we're going to... Point out the tires. They're very special tires. They are very special. What a... They're built out of uh, high impact rubber and mostly aluminum. You got to remember on Mars, a lot of so soil is uh, sand and all kinds. We don't know yet, but you you have to design a wheel like you see here to trans transverse through maybe six or eight inches of sure. soft soil and over boulders. So these are independently uh, suspension they can go up over one wheel can go over a boulder while the other one's sand level in six inches of sand so it's a kind of a co complicated su uh, suspension system wow i could use that in some uh, west cob roads as, as big as that tire looks and feels it, I, I think the whole thing only weighs a couple hundred pounds oh so yeah it looks light, intense lightweight aluminum and lightweight high impact rubber and all those kind of things sure obviously when you go to mars uh the more your vehicle weighs the less other stuff you can take. So right. you want to minimize everything. Uh, minimize while maintaining security and safety. Absolutely. Um, so you can see here uh, nozzles and such. And uh, as we move over, we can see uh, tools that will be used uh, on the outside. You can see the juncture here where, where the front end will separate. Oh, so this is where it'll split right there. Okay. That makes sense. And um, when as it leaves, of, these four wheels will go with the front end and leave the two wheels back here and then put down the stanchions to keep the front end level. Oh, and so, yeah, so when this part separates... This stays right here. There's two yeah. wheels and the rest of the cabin stay right here. Uh, okay, so it'll it'll still be going with four wheels. I see, I see. So it'll actually be separating there. Um, and there's a bunch of literature that goes along with the summer tour. Again, uh, this will all be here until Sunday, part of the battery. Um, let's, let's hop around the front and, and okay. take a look at it. So this is what it looks like from the front. Again, like I said, very, uh, <laughs> very Batman, uh, Transformers esque. And how much? You see the independent sus suspension. Yeah. And how much is the whole thing weigh? Do we know? I think it's about uh, six thousand pounds. Six thousand pounds. Okay. Um, Good five hundred pounds. Um, well, that's great. I I hope it looks this cool if and when. Uh, something like this makes it to Mars. Um, and so what, what's, the, uh, what's the purpose of taking this vehicle around and touring it? The purpose, uh, we got twofold. We want to encourage the young people of this country of ours to start thinking about uh, getting their education, study space, you know, science and technology. To be an engineer or scientist, come down and work for NASA and help not only design this thing, but you could be one of the first people to use it on the surface of Mars. So we want to uh, 
you know, encourage all the youngsters to do the right thing by staying in school and studying. And who knows, they could come down and do what I got to do, fly this, fly off to Mars and, and drive this wonderful vehicle around on the surface. So you got to stay in school. You got to study. We want to encourage people to come down and visit us at the Kennedy Space Center because there's so many things to see and do down there. It's a right. two-day adventure down there. Um, and so I don't know if you know uh, how much it costs to put together this concept vehicle. Uh, it's in the hundreds of thousands, but I'm not sure. Hundreds of thousands. It's, it's not. It's not space worthy, so to speak. It's not pressurized, and it doesn't have all the uh, radiation protection and all the fancy electronics. But by the time we get the real thing, they're actually going to do the real mission. They're going to be talking a few million dollars. Yeah, I uh, I imagine so. Um, your Buick does not need radiation protection, uh, hopefully, but certainly a space. We'll need it up there. We'll yes. need it on Mars. <laughs> um, okay, great. Well, is there anything else you think folks should know about the rover? Uh, just we're proud of it at Kennedy. We're proud we got it done. We're proud of uh, the fact we're bringing it out and letting people see it. And I'd love one of these days, if I live long enough, for the some gentleman or lady come up to me and say, John, I uh, saw you down in Atlanta with the Martian rover 15 years ago. I just I got a point to the astronaut corps, and I might be one of the first guys that drives that thing that you showed me. So I'd love to be around long enough to hear that message from somebody. That'd be great. I hope you wouldn't be jealous that they'd be driving on Mars. I won't be. I'll be happy. Okay. Um, excellent. Um, well, I'm just going to give folks uh, another go around of it in case they need to see it. Thank but you. I'll leave Thank you on you very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So again, giving you all a closer look at the uh, suspension here. Uh, like John was saying, it, this part will separate from the back part, which is mostly uh, for research. Um, again, walking you all through. Here's some stats about it. Like he was saying, um, we're talking like just five or six miles per hour. Um, you will not be able to take this thing out on its 285, although maybe that's all you'll need in the middle of some traffic. And uh, like I was telling y'all, you can see the uh, sample tools here. It looks like a shovel, some some other stuff. Who knows if that's actually uh, what they'll be using, or if that's mostly just for show. Um, walking you all through. And again, there's some of the literature explaining uh, what all this business is. Now, you all can find out a little bit more by clicking on the article that's linked to in this post. And also, you can come down and see it for yourself uh, until Sunday. The, the hours and details of that are included in the post. Thanks for watching. This has been Ben Brash, live with the Atlanta Journal.